If you've seen some of my other videos, you will know that I love playing Chon Yun a lot, which is why with his recent appearance on the 3.7 banner, I thought that it might be worthwhile to make an updated guide on his build, as with the introduction of new characters and a lot more new weapons, there has definitely been some changes to the most optimal way you can play him. This guide will be structured into 5 parts. The first will be an overview of Chon Yun's kit, constellations, and an analysis on the role he plays on the team. The second and third sections will each cover one of Chon Yun's playstyles, that is, either using him as a sub DPS or main DPS. In these sections will be recommendations on his weapons, artifacts, and team comps that will cater specifically towards the two different builds. The fourth section will be an advanced tip section, where we'll cover things like how to maximize his burst damage, animation cancelling, and even some less conventional team comping. Finally, the video will end with a quick summary on his essential material requirements and some recommendations for collecting routes. So, whether you're a seasoned Chon Yun main or just pulled in from a banner, I hope this video will provide some helpful information to you and your Chon Yun. And if it does, please consider subscribing and supporting my relatively small YouTube channel. By the way, if you're new to Genshin and don't know what terms like C1, 2, 3, E, Q, or AR stands for, in the description of this video is a quick list of commonly used Genshin terms to help you out. To start, Chonyu has a 4 stage normal attack combo that will, if you have his constellation 1 unlocked, release 3 ice blades upon the final strike. What's important to note here is that Chonyu unfortunately has the third lowest normal attack multiplier in the game, which is something important to keep in mind when we discuss his different playstyles later. Chonyu's skill is his main supporting ability. Casting it will deal AoE cryo damage that will also create a frost circle on the ground that will infuse Old Sword, Claymore, and Poem users' normal attacks within it with cryo. This infusion can be very situational, as if you have a physical DPS like Razor, infusing his attacks with cryo may actually ruin your character's damage. By obtaining Chonyun's Ascension 1 passive, characters within his skill circle will receive a normal attack speed increase of 8%. Chonyun's Ascension 2 allows his Spirit Blade to be summoned after the skill circle disappears, dealing AoE cryo damage and lowering the cryo resistance of enemies hit by it by 10% for 8 seconds. Finally, if you have Chonyun's second constellation, his skill circle will have an additional effect of giving characters within it a CD reduction of 15% to both their skill and burst. This is mainly notable in characters with long cooldowns such as Xing Chou, where a CD reduction of up to 3 seconds can be achieved. Chonyun's burst has a cooldown of 12 seconds and a low 40 energy cost. Upon casting, three spirit blades will be summoned, dealing massive amounts of AoE cryo damage. If you're fortunate enough to have Chonyun's sixth constellation, then an additional fourth spirit blade will be summoned, and Chonyun's burst will have the additional effect of dealing 15% more damage to opponents with a lower HP percentage of the max HP remaining than Chonyun. As previously mentioned, Chonyun's C1 will allow his last attack of his normal attack combo to additionally release 3 Ice Blades that deals 50% of Chonyun's attack as cryo damage. His C2 allows characters within his skill circle to gain a CD reduction of 15%. C3 increases his burst level by 3. C4 allows Chonyun to regenerate 1 energy every time he hits an opponent affected by cryo. C5 increases Chonyun's skill level by 3, and finally C6 will add an additional blade to his burst and deal 15% more damage to opponents with lower HP percentage of their max HP remaining than Chonyun. The most important constellation for Chonyun, and a good place to stop if you're pulling to build him, would be 2 and 6. The CD reduction offered by his constellation 2 will give your Chonyun a fantastic supporting capabilities both as a support and DPS, whilst C6 will massively increase your Chonyun's damage output. So now that we have a basic understanding of Chonyun's kit, what is the most optimal way to play him? Well, from his low normal attack multipliers and his burst short cooldown and low energy cost, it's clear that regardless of what build you run on Chonyun, his burst will be his main method of damage output. This is why I think that the most optimal way of playing Chonyun is to use him as a quick swap sub DPS. However, as we'll later cover in the video, it is definitely not impossible to use him as a main on-field DPS. But before we discuss any of that, let's take a look at weapon, artifacts, and team comp recommendations for a sub DPS Chonyun. As with some of the most recent patches, Chonyun's pool of weapon choices has definitely expanded. The top two choices for Chonyun will be a refinement 3 to 5 Serpent Spine and the relatively new Beacon of the Reed Sea. Options that are slightly below the two will be the Wolf's Gravestone, followed by the Redhorn Stone Thresher, followed by an 1 to 2 refinement Serpent Spine. The reason why Wolf Gravestone is not ranked any higher comes down to the secondary effect that it offers. Chonyun's level scaling stat is already attack percent, this followed by the fact that most of the time you'll be running him with Bennett and possibly Pyro Resonance, which all buffs attack. What Chonyun really needs is crit stats, hence why weapons with secondary stats of crit will be favored more highly than attack percent. For me personally, I believe that the best in slot weapon for a quick swap burst Chonyun will be a high refinement Serpent Spine. This is because with a sub DPS Chonyun, Chonyun will never be on field for prolonged periods of time, which means that the Serpent 
weapon spine stack will almost always be at max, as they do not reset when the character leaves the field. In terms of 4 star and free to play options, don't worry, there is plenty to choose from. A surprisingly good option for support Chonyun is actually the Sacrificial Greatsword. At high refinements, the Sacrificial Greatsword will provide a very consistent uptime on Chonyun's skill, which considering all the supporting buffs Chonyun's skill circle provides, can be extremely game changing. Using this weapon also means that you don't have to worry about Chonyun's ER requirements. It is important to note that the Spirit Blades summoned when Chonyun's skill circle ends when you have his Ascension 2 passive actually can trigger the Sacrificial effect, which is a huge bonus. Other great 4 star options are the Tuna Sword, Akumoru, the Lithic Blade if you're running him in a team with at least another Li Yue character, and the Mailed Flower if you're going to be triggering Melt. For non-gacha options, the Craftable Prototype Archaic is a decent option, and if you're just starting out, you can always throw back on the 3 star Debate Club and the Blood Tainted Greatsword. Just don't use weapons with physical damage bonuses, as those are useless due to Chonyun's Cryo Infusion. After playing and building Chonyun for well over a year now, I find that the most consistent and reliable artifacts on Chonyun is either the 2-piece Noblesse and 2-piece Blizzard Rare combo, or a 4-piece Emblem of Severed Fate. Both options are really good, and it is really up to you which set you choose. However, just note that being a 2-piece combo with both artifacts available in the Strongbox, a 2-piece Noblesse with 2-piece Blizzard Rare combo will be much easier to build if you're looking to go high investment. Other 2-piece combos, such as pairing 2-piece Noblesse with 2-piece Wanderer, or any of the 18% attack bonus artifacts, could could also work, but is not ideal. 4-piece Noblesse could be considered if you don't already have another Noblesse user on the team, but just note that doing this will greatly reduce your Chonyun sub-DPS potentials. Another option that is worth considering is the 4-piece Blizzard Strayer. This is a good option if you're going to be running him in a Freeze or Mono Cryo team, but outside of that, such as in Melt teams, it is generally not recommended. If you're going to go for a Melt team, then other artifact options you could consider is the 4-piece Gilded Dreams. This could be good if you're already farming the Deepwood set for another character, but if you're not, it is honestly not that much different from the other sets. If you're just starting out and haven't gotten to AR45 yet, I would honestly not worry about artifacts too much. But if you're looking for an option, you could always use a 4-piece or a mix of Berserker, Braveheart, or Exile. For artifact stats, you're looking for a main stat of attack percent on the sand, cryo damage bonus on the cup, and crit rate or crit damage on the circlet, depending on which you're lacking. Aim to achieve a 1-2 to ratio between crit rate and crit damage. If you're running Chonyun on 4-piece Blizzard Strayer, just know that this ratio would obviously be different, as the artifact will offer an additional 40% crit bonus when used under the right conditions. For substats, I would recommend prioritizing crit over attack over EM over ER. If you're going to be using Chonyun in a melt team, such as the national team, then EM could be more favor than attack percent. However, I find that attack bonuses are, on a whole, generally more reliable. Now let's talk a little bit about Chonyun's ER requirements. Despite Chonyun's burst having a low energy cost of 40, because of his longer skill cooldown and the fact that you won't be using him on field very often, Chonyun's ER does still require some attention. To visualize this, at 100% NG recharge, the 4 particles generated from Chonyun's skill will only fill about a quarter of his energy bar. If you pair him with a Favonius user, then about 1.5 of his energy bar will be filled. By giving Chonyun an energy recharge stance, which boosts his ER to about 151%, his skill and white orbs from Favonius weapons will fill about 80% of his burst. Now, in a real situation, there will be particles generated from your other team members and particles from fighting enemies, which is why I think that a good range to aim for is around 130 to 150 ER. This will obviously vary greatly depending on your specific situation, such as how many cryo party members you have on the team, the amount of characters using for various weapons, and of course, if you're using the 4-piece emblem set, then a higher ER can certainly be more beneficial. In terms of talents, for a sub DPS Chonyun, prioritize his burst over skill and don't bother upgrading his normal attacks as you won't be using them. Now for the fun stuff, team building. One team comp that has always been good with Chonyun is of course the original national team. This team is fantastic for free to play players as all characters in it are 4 stars. However, I won't go into detail on this team for too long as I'm sure that there are already many videos and posts out there about this team that you can reference. The next team comp will be a freeze team, where the main goal is to capitalize off of Chonyun's cryo infusion. In these teams, there'll be an on-field DPS like Kaya or Rosaria who can both utilize Chonyun's cryo infusion to maximize the normal attack damage whilst also consistently applying cryo onto enemies. The second slot will be an off-field hydro applicator like Xingqiu, Yelan, or Kukomi, so that a fairly consistent freeze up time can be achieved. Essentially functioning like a budget Ayaka freeze team, the last position on the team is a flex spot. Characters like Shen He, Bennett, Kazuha, Sukro, Zhongli, or even other hydro applicators could all work. Another team option is a mono cryo team, where you have Chonyun, Shen He, and an on-field cryo DPS like Kaya or Rosaria, and a flex spot. If you don't have Shen He, it is possible to switch it out for a pyro character like Xiang Ling, and use Bennett in the flex spot to turn this mono cryo team into a reverse melt team. Now, a question that some of you may have is whether Chonyun works as a support for Ayaka. The answer is yes, but there are honestly better options out there. 
Whilst Chonyin's Cryo Infusion can help Ayaka conserve stamina and her CD reduction can help make playing Ayaka easier, the truth is you're probably better off going for other options that will buff Ayaka's damage directly, like Shen He, Kazaha, or even a battery like Diona so that you're bursting with Ayaka more consistently. That pretty much summarizes the sub DPS section of this video. Again, based on Chonyin's kit, playing him as a quick swap sub DPS is what I personally see Chonyin performing the best in. But of course, I know that there are plenty of people out there like me who don't care about all that and just want to use him as a main DPS. So without further ado, let's get into how to build Chonyun as a main on-field DPS. The weapon recommendations will be largely the same, however there are a few changes. As an on-field DPS, I would say that the Beacon of the Re-C actually outperforms the Serpent Spine in this case, as being on-field and taking damage means that you'll be able to fully utilize the Re-C's passive, whilst the Serpent Spine may not be as good as it will be harder to keep the passive stacks up. The rest of the ranking will stay largely the same, although the Redhorn Stone Thresher could potentially outperform the Wolf's Gravestone here, as with an on-field DPS, you'll be able to utilize the passive ability better, and overall the Redhorn is just a really powerful stat stick. Lastly, I will try to stay clear of the Sacrificial Greatsword in this case, as you're seeking to maximize Chonyun's personal damage as much as possible. For artifacts, I would say that the 2-piece Noblesse and the 2-piece Blizzard Rare combo actually outperforms the 4-piece Emblem set in this case, as you're not just solely relying on Chonyun's burst for damage, but rather also his skill and normal attack. Obviously, for an on-field DPS, 4-piece Noblesse is no longer recommended, but other than that, the artifact sets and artifact stat recommendations will stay largely the same. For talent priorities, Chonyun's burst is still the most important. However, as you'll be using his normal attack as well, I would say that his normal attacks and skill have roughly equal priority. A personal favorite team, and the team that I found most success with using Chonyun as a main carry, is a reverse melt centered variant of the national team, where Xingqiu is swapped out for an Amino character like Kazuha or Sucrose. In this team, you're looking to maximize Chonyun's AoE cryo burst damage by first infusing enemies with pyro grouping them, and then bursting. What's really great about this team is its versatility, as it works great against both single target and multi-wave enemies. For an on-field Chonyun, another interesting team you could go for is a Shadow Freeze comp. In these teams, there'll be another cryo character like Shen He or Diona, an off-field Hydro Applicator like Xing Chiu, and finally a Flex Spot. For a Shadow Team, 4-piece Blizzard Strayer actually becomes a really good option for Chonyun, as you'll be consistently freezing and applying cryo resonance onto your enemies. It is important to note that the extra shadow damage dealt by shadow does scale with Chonyun's EM. However, despite that, going for crit stats on Chonyun even in a shadow team will generally still be more reliable. Now that we got all the build sections out the way, let's get into some advanced tips for using Chonyun. I'm sure by now you would have noticed the importance of Chonyun's burst in his kit, which is why we have to make sure that in every way possible we are maximizing its damage. One way to achieve this is by reverse melting. Chonyun's burst has no ICD which means that all three or four, if you have C6, of Chonyun's Ice Blades can trigger a melt reaction. However, due to the stagger nature of his burst, some setup is required if you want to melt all three or four strikes of his burst. Without getting too deep into the maths of elemental gauge theory, just note that all pyro infusion with a gauge unit of two or above can allow a triple melt to be achieved by Chonyun's burst. As an example, by first infusing pyro onto enemy with Bennett's burst, we can then very easily achieve a triple melt. This is partly the reason why Bennett is valued so highly as a character to pair with Chonyun, as their burst just synergizes so well. Now, if you have a C6 Chonyun, then getting a 4x melt is sadly a lot more difficult. One way to achieve this is through the high frequency pyro application of Ember's burst. However, in a real situation, it's quite difficult to get both Ember and Chonyun's burst up at the same time, so this isn't the most reliable method. Another way to do this is by using the Pyro Archon himself. By using Chonyun's burst immediately after you deploy Guaba, you can achieve a 4x melt provided that the enemy had already been infused with Gauge 2 Pyro. Thus, a rotation in a Chonyun melt team could be Bennett Q E, followed by Shaoling E, then Chonyun Q to get the 4x melt. Just note that timing Guaba can be a little fiddly, and a 4x melt won't be always guaranteed. A more secure way, however, is to use Sunfire Gene. By using Jin's Burst on top of a Bennett Burst, Chonyun will then be able to trigger a 4 times melt reaction due to Jin's Burst swirling Bennett's Pyro. This lends us to a fairly unconventional team of Chonyun, Jin, Bennett, and Shen He, where the whole team is dedicated to maximizing Chonyun's Burst damage. Whilst this may sound viable on paper, this team actually has a really large vulnerability window, as after you use everyone's Burst, you're kind of just stuck there without any real secondary DPS option. So try this team with caution. The final method of achieving a 4x melt is through the burning effect, where Dendril members will work with Bennett to set up a burning aura so that Chonyun can get all 4 of his melts off. A team to utilize this would consist of Chonyun, Bennett, any Dendril character, and a flex spot. Just note that depending on who you choose as your flex character, 
this team may be a little fragile, as it is very easy to burn yourself to death, especially if you're using the Serpent Spy on Chon Yun. Now for some more general tips on using Chon Yun. Place Chon Yun as your first party member when doing the Spiral Abyss if you have the Serpent Spine on him, as you can let the Serpent Spine passive stack to max before you even start the floor. You can cancel Chon Yun's animation on his last normal attack strike by dashing or using your skill. You can also use his skill after his third normal attack to get a smoother transition by cancelling out his last normal attack. And finally, Chon Yun is a surprisingly effective shield breaker. By using his skill, a normal attack, followed by the normal attack of an infused character, you can very easily break an enemy's shield if they're Hydro or Electro. Now finally, after a 3500 word script, we're on to the last section of the video. On screen now are the total materials required to ascend Chon Yun to level 90. I'd recommend fighting Storm Terror on Monday, doing Talent Domains on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, and the Cryo Regisfine on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Obviously, this schedule may change depending on what weapon you're ascending for Chon Yun. Below in the description of this video are great links to videos of collecting roots for Core Lapis and Hilichol Masks. And this finally concludes our ultimate Chon Yun guide. If you found this video in any way helpful, please consider leaving a like and subscribing, as this video took a really long time to make and drained out most of my sanity. Finally, if there are anything I missed or any suggestions for improving my videos, please feel free to leave them down in the comments and thanks for watching.